Today we're discussing clinical perspectives, fish consumption, methylmercury exposure, and related health issues with Dr. Maida Galvez, who is the director of the Mount Sinai Pediatric Environmental Specialty Unit and assistant professor in preventive medicine at the Mount Sinai School of Medicine in New York. Dr. Galvez, how are you doing? I'm great, thank you. The general public is often confused and concerned about fish consumption and potential health effects. What are the key points for health care professionals to consider when assessing for methylmercury toxicity? Fish consumption is a main source of methylmercury exposure, so it's important that healthcare care providers screen for methylmercury exposure by taking a thorough dietary history. Important populations to screen and counsel to reduce health risks related to methylmercury include children and women of childbearing age, since methylmercury can pass through the placenta and breast milk. Mercury exposure in utero or early childhood has a potential to impact the developing brain. What should dietary history address? Uh, the dietary history should address, one, the type and size of fish consumed. For example, large predatory fish such as swordfish are high in mercury, as well as, two, the portion size and frequency of consumption. One easy tip to share with families is that a four-ounce fish serving is approximately the size and thickness of a deck of cards. What advice should you share with families? The most important piece of counseling to families is to eat fish but choose wisely. The goal for families is to maximize the benefits of omega-3 fatty acids found in fish while reducing potential exposures to methylmercury. And so what you should share with families is that pregnant women, women of childbearing age, nursing mothers, and young children should completely avoid fish known to be high in mercury. And this includes shark, tilefish, swordfish, and king mackerel. Families often ask, should I have a test for mercury performed? What's recommended? This should really be decided on a case-by-case basis in consultation with a health professional or environmental health specialist. Oftentimes, the most important intervention is educating families about the recommended guidelines on dietary intake of fish. Diagnostic testing using blood or hair from a reliable laboratory can be conducted but is not always needed. If you have questions about methylmercury exposure, a free resource available to healthcare providers and families are pediatric environmental specialty units that have teams of health professionals who are knowledgeable in the field of children's environmental health. The Fish Facts website lists the web address for a specialty unit in your region. The local poison control is also an excellent resource if concerned about the diagnosis of acute symptoms of mercury poisoning, which is very rare in the United States. Thank you very much for your time, Dr. Galvez. Thank you. Hello, Betty. Hi. How are you doing today? Hi, how are you? Good. Good to see you again. So what can I do for you today? Well, I just haven't been feeling really good. I've okay. sort of been dizzy, uh, a little bit off balance, um, blurred vision, mm-hmm. and I'm becoming a little bit more forgetful. and. My appetite's not been really, really good. I've been trying okay. to lose a little bit of weight, sure. and I don't know what's, what's, what's mm-hmm. happening. So how long have these things been going on? For about two weeks. Okay. And did everything start around the same time, or did you have a certain symptom before the others? Oh, it all kind of came, just kind of gradually, kind of came on. Okay. And have you ever had uh, symptoms like this before? Never. No? Okay. And any recent changes in anything like medications or anything in your lifestyle that you could think of that you know started a couple weeks ago that's different for you Mm, medications no i've been exercising a little bit more okay and also i've been eating well i've been eating tuna fish Mm -hmm. um because i wanted to lose a little bit of weight okay so as part of your diet you're uh, eating a tuna right and it only has a lot of omega-3s and i just thought you know it would be Mm-hmm. And so how much tuna are you eating um, in a week or in a given day? Um, about, oh, two meals a day. Two meals a day. Lunch and dinner. Okay. And how long have you been doing that for? A little over two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. And have you eaten much tuna previous to this? Uh, mm, once in a while. Once in a while. But not, okay. Not as much as I mm-hmm. as now. Sure. All right. Well... Uh, we're going to order some tests today to see, you know, if we can find out what's the cause of your symptoms, some blood tests and things. There's you know, a couple different things that 
you know, could be causing these things. Um, with the amount of tuna you've been eating in the past two weeks, I'm a little bit concerned um, about uh, mercury toxicity being a possible cause for your symptoms. So I'd like to do a test for that as well to determine exactly how much mercury would be in your body um, right now. Oh. Um, have you heard anything before about uh, mercury um, toxicity from you know fish consumption? No. Oh, okay. Um, well, like I said, um, I would. We're going to do the test today to determine just what the level of mercury would be um, in your body exactly. Um, right now, I would highly recommend eliminating tuna from your diet altogether um, mm -hmm. for okay. uh, at least a little while, and also I would recommend starting a B complex vitamin. Um, which would help if the you know, mercury in your body is high, this would help to um, eliminate it quicker and also um, improve some of your symptoms, hopefully. Okay. So does that sound like a plan for today? Yeah. Okay. I also have some brochures here um, on uh, safe fish consumption. Um, we like to tell our patients to eat fish because like you said, fish is a high quality source of protein and a source of omega fatty acids. Um, however, um, eating the wrong types of fish could be um, a health risk for some people. So basically these brochures really summarize a couple of key points is that uh, with fish, um, uh, the, the big thing is to consider the size of the fish. Smaller fish generally have lower levels of mercury. Um, okay. Large predatory fish like shark, um, king mackerel, or swordfish we eat, um, usually tell people to avoid altogether because those are the highest in mercury. So where does tuna fall? Well, tuna used to be a lower level mercury um, fish. However, there's recent evidence that shows that it's more sort of a medium level fish. So um, current recommendations are to not really exceed um, eating more than two cans of tuna um, in a week. So that would c um, come to the next uh, key point would be the, the serving size of the fish that you're eating, um, okay. which is generally six ounces, which is about the size of the, the palm of your hand and not to exceed you know, more than you know, two servings of that per week. And then the last key point is the frequency that you're eating these servings. Even if you're eating a fish that's uh, really low on mercury, but you're eating 20 to 30 servings per week of it, you're, you could be getting a significant dose of mercury that um, could lead to um, symptoms similar to yours. Mm. So, do you have any questions about anything like that? No, don't. Okay. I, I'm surprised. All right. Well, thank you. Well, yeah, well, I'll see you back in uh, a couple of weeks and we'll uh, have the, I'll send the test results to you and give you a call and see how you're feeling, but I'd like to see you back here in a couple of weeks to go over things and see how you're doing at that time, okay? Okay, thanks, Dr. Rico. All right, thank you. Come in. Hi, Betty. Hi, Dr. Rico. How are you doing? Fantastic. Great, great to hear. Yeah. So, the symptoms you were having a couple of weeks ago, are they improved? I mean, they're gone. Gone completely? Yeah, I mean, oh. I've had more energy. I um, feel like eating a little bit more, um, and my memory, I can remember little things that I was forgetting before, so sure. I'm really feeling much better. Well, I'm very glad to hear that. You definitely had a higher than normal amount of mercury in your system, and uh, after the, the two weeks here of not eating you know, fish and taking the B-complex vitamin, it seems like uh, things are starting to go back to normal, which is great to hear. So, so how does mercury get into fish? I just never thought of mercury in fish. Well, unfortunately, humans are the largest source of mercury entering the atmosphere. Um, basically, the number one source would be um, from coal-fired power plants, uh, where inorganic mercury is released into the atmosphere. Um, it gets rained down into bodies of water, where bacteria in the water actually convert it to methylmercury, which is the form that um, is absorbable in um, animals. And starting mm. from uh, small fish in the very bottom of the food chain, um, higher up in larger fish then eventually into other animals and humans. The higher up you get in the food chain, the more concentrated the methylmercury would actually get in your body tissue. Uh -huh. So that's our, that's the number one source of uh, mercury um, for humans anyway, would be fish consumption due to um, this methylmercury. Mm, yeah. Never imagined that. Yeah. So I really appreciate your help and I, you know, I'm, I'm so just so glad I feel better. I'm glad too. Well, you take care everybody. You too. All right.